For as long as humans have sailed the oceans, we feared what lies beneath them. Long before modern science, sailors told tales of monstrous sea creatures capable of pulling entire ships beneath the waves. These weren't just scary stories told over firelight. To many sailors, the threat was real, and they called it the Kraken. The legend of the Kraken dates back to Nordic mythology, a creature so massive its body could be mistaken for an island. It was set to dwell off the coast of Norway and Greenland, attacking ships with its tentacles, dragging men into the black abyss. But the Norse weren't the only ones to tell stories like this. Across the world, similar tales appeared in different cultures. The Greeks had the Scylla, a many-headed sea monster. Pacific Islanders told stories of tentacled beasts lurking in the depths. Even the ancient Japanese had their own sea monster, and they called it Ryujin. For centuries, we dismissed these legends as exaggeration. But what if I told you these stories about Kraken weren't too far-fetched? In recent years, we've discovered that the ocean is home to creatures that resemble something more Lovecraftian than an actual animal. Beings with massive tentacles, enormous eyes, and mouths lined with razor-sharp beaks. Of course, I'm talking about squids, specifically the giant and the colossal squid, once thought to be mythical but are actually very, very real. They can grow up to 40 feet long, and some actually argue they could grow up to 60 feet in length, and they live in the darkest depths of the ocean where light doesn't reach and humans rarely explore. Even today, we know shockingly little about them. So, what exactly are squids? Squids are part of the group of animals called cephalopods, which include octopus, cuttlefish, and the rarely seen vampire squid. Squids are fast, intelligent, and built for survival in some of the most extreme environments on Earth. Their bodies are streamlined like torpedoes designed for speed. They move using jet propulsion, sucking water, and blasting it out through a siphon to shoot through the sea like underwater rockets. And with their massive eyes and lightning-fast reflexes, they're some of the ocean's most efficient hunters. But not all squids are created equal. Most are relatively small, but two species in particular push the boundaries of what we think is possible in nature, the giant squid and the colossal squid, the two largest known cephalopods currently alive today. The giant squid was once thought to be a myth, known only through washed up remains and sucker scars found on the bodies of sperm whales. But it's a very real deep sea dweller that can reach lengths of up to 43 feet. It has long feeding tentacles lined with powerful suction cups and sharp tooth-like rings. Its eyes are among the largest in the animal kingdom, something as big as a human head, allowing it to see in the darkness of the deep ocean. Then there's the colossal squid, which is arguably even more terrifying. Though slightly shorter than the giant squid at around 32 feet, it's much heavier, with a thick, muscular build. Unlike the giant squid, the colossal squid's tentacles are armed not with just suction cups, but with rotating hooks, an adaptation that feels more like a horror movie than actual biology. What makes both these creatures so bizarre is how little we actually know about giant squid and colossal squid, especially the colossal squid. Giant squid lives in all of the planet's oceans, living in depths at around 500 meters to 1,000 meters, whilst colossal squid only live in the freezing waters of the Antarctic and primarily live in depths exceeding 1,000 meters, making colossal squid way harder to film and study compared to giant squid. To date, there's actually zero photos of colossal squid in their natural habitat. So to understand how squids became the alien-like creatures they are today, we have to go way back, over 500 million years, to a time long before dinosaurs, mammals, or even trees. Like I mentioned before, squids are part of the cephalopod family, a group of marine mammals that first appeared during the Cambrian period, one of the most explosive eras in the evolutionary history. Back then, the oceans were filled with very strange life forms, and among them were the earliest ancestors of the squids. Unlike modern squids, these ancient creatures had external shells, much like today's nautiluses. These shelled cephalopods, called orthocones, looked like long cone-shaped tubes with tentacles poking out of one end. Over millions of years, some lineages begin to lose those heavy shells, trading protection for speed and flexibility. This evolutionary shift gave rise to the fast, soft-bodied predators we now know as squids and octopus. Fossil evidence of ancient cephalopods is limited, mostly because soft-bodied animals don't preserve well. But we do have some impressive relics, like the belemnites, who are extinct squid-like creatures that had an internal shell and roamed the oceans during the age of dinosaur. Their fossilized bullet-shaped rostrums are still found today, often mistaken for fossilized shark teeth. Belemnites are the closest extinct relatives to modern squids, showing us a snapshot of what squids were like. But what's most fascinating about squids' evolution is how advanced their nervous systems became in such a short time, at least in evolutionary terms anyways. Cephalopods developed complex brains, large eyes, and advanced camouflage abilities, making them some of the most intelligent invertebrates alive. This level of complexity is rare outside the vertebrates and is not really fully understood. While most squids evolved for speed and stealth in shallow waters, the colossal and giant squids adapted to life in the deep ocean, far from predator and competition. 
Besides maybe a case of deep-sea gigantism, an evolutionary trend where creatures living in extreme environments tend to grow unusually large, possibly as a way to store energy or deter predators like sperm whales. These colossal creatures are living links to the prehistoric world. They're not just oversized anomalies, they're the modern-day echoes of an evolutionary path that began half a billion years ago. And they remind us that some of the ocean's most ancient and mysterious creatures are still with us today, just hidden far below in the deep. For centuries, the giant squid existed somewhere between myth and science. We had the bodies found washed up on beaches or pulled from the stomachs of sperm whales, but we had no idea how these animals behaved. They were the ocean's greatest enigma. Even today, despite modern technology, no one has ever observed a giant squid in the wild for more than a few fleeting moments. Most of what we know is based on dead specimens, rare footage, and educated guesses. One thing is clear, giant squids are not mindless beasts. Like all cephalopods, they belong to one of the most intelligent groups of invertebrates on Earth. While most studies focus on octopus and cuttlefish, which can solve puzzles and escape enclosures and use tools, it is believed that squids also possess advanced problem-solving skills, especially in the way that they hunt and react to threats. The giant squid's brain is large and complex, especially for a deep-sea animal. They have a well-developed nervous system and they have the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. Their massive eyes suggest that they heavily rely on vision to navigate and detect prey in the pitch-black ocean. These massive eyes are capable of detecting the faintest glimmers of bioluminescence, helping them spot other creatures, or even the approach of their only known predator, the sperm whale. As for the giant squid's behavior, it's believed to be a solitary ambush predator. It likely covers in the darkness, conserving energy, waiting for fish or smaller squid to drift close. Then it strikes with its long, peeding tentacles, pulling its prey towards its sharp beak. And inside their beak is a radula, a tongue-like structure lined with teeth that grinds prey down before digestion. And as for their social behavior, well, we know almost nothing. There's no evidence of them traveling in groups, and no one's ever witnessed a mating ritual. In fact, much of their reproductive cycle is still a mystery, just a reminder of how little we truly observed of them. Ultimately, the giant squid is a creature that defies easy explanation. It's smart, elusive, and alien in the truest sense, not because it's from another world, but because it feels like it could be. And you might realize that I only just spoke of the giant squid's behavior and not the colossal squid's behavior. Why is that? Well, that's because we know pretty much nothing of colossal squid's behavior. Yeah, sorry to disappoint. The deep ocean is one of the most hostile environments on Earth. There's no sunlight, the pressure's crushing, and the temperatures are just above freezing. Yet somehow, this is where the two largest invertebrates on the planet, the giant squid and the colossal squid, not only survive, but thrive. To exist in this alien world, these creatures have evolved some of the most specialized adaptations in the animal kingdom. The giant squid, as we've seen, is built for reach and speed. It has long whip-like tentacles lined with suction cups and sharp serrated rings, which is perfect for grabbing prey from a distance. It's sought to rely on ambush tactics, staying still in the cold blackness until something wanders too close. The colossal squid, however, is a different beast. Though shorter than a giant squid, it is far more massive and muscular, weighing up to 1,500 pounds. Its tentacles are shorter but more heavily armed, lined with rotating hooks that can twist and dig into its prey. It's not just scary looking, it's built like a tank, perhaps better suited to taking down larger, more resistant prey in the depths of the southern ocean. Both species have buoyancy adaptations, like ammonia-rich flesh that helps them float without needing to swim constantly. Their bodies are cold and gelatinous, conserving energy in a world where food is scarce. But even these giants aren't the top of the food chain, surprisingly. The only known creature that hunts them is a sperm whale, one of the only animals capable of diving deep enough to hunt them. Battles between these titans of the deep are stuff of legend and science. Many sperm whales have been found with circular scars from the squid tentacles, evidence of violent underwater struggles. In some cases, the beak of the squids have actually been found in the sperm whale's stomach. Down in the abyss, everything is exaggerated. The pressure, the darkness, and the predators. And to survive here, squids have to become something almost otherworldly. Something we're still struggling to fully understand today. Now, the giant squid and colossal squid may steal the spotlight, but they're far from the only creepy cephalopods lurking in the deep. For years, humans have searched the stars in search of aliens, but why search the stars when you have the likes of big fin squid right in our own ocean? First captured on video in the early 2000s, the big fin squid looks like something out of a sci-fi horror movie. Its arm and tentacles are insanely long. Scientists estimate up to 20 times the length of its own body, and they hang down at a stiff 90 degree angle, giving the creature a puppet-like appearance. The big fin squid's movements are slow, eerie, and ghost-like, drifting through the water like it's floating in zero gravity. No one's entirely sure how it hunts or feeds, but scientists speculate that it may drag those long arms of theirs among the seafloor grabbing whatever it brushes against. We know almost nothing about it. Most sightings are from ROV footage at extreme depths, often deeper than 6,000 feet. No one's ever captured a live specimen, and every glimpse we get only raises more questions. Is it rare, or is it just rarely seen? How does it reproduce? What does it eat? As of now, we know barely anything, and it's by far one of the deep sea's most creepiest mysteries. But the big fin squid was not alone. While not an actual squid like its name implies, the vampire squid is a distant cephalopod relative that lives in the near oxygenless water, surviving in a layer of the ocean where almost nothing else can. Instead of hunting like other squids, it floats motionless, feeding on something called marine snow, which is a constant drizzle of decaying organic matter falling from above. Its cloak-like webbing gives it appearance of an actual vampire with a cloak. 
but despite its similarity to a vampire and its name, it doesn't actually drink any blood. Then there's a firefly squid, a small species from Japan that puts on a dazzling bioluminescence display, lighting up the dark sea with pulses of electric blue lights along its bodies and arms. During spawning season, they gather in massive numbers near shore, turning the entire stretch of coastline into a glowing alien landscape. And finally, the glass squid, with a nearly transparent body, balloon-like shape and odd floating posture, making it look more like a jellyfish than an actual squid. These cephalopods, big, small, glowing, ghostly, remind us of the ocean, is full of the most weirdest creatures on earth. So maybe the old sailors weren't so wrong after all. For centuries they feared what they couldn't explain. Monstrous, tentacled beasts lurking beneath the waves, pulling ships deep into the abyss. They called it the Kraken, a creature of myth and nightmare, but today we know the truth is almost just as strange. The giant squid with its sprawling limbs and stealthy nature and the colossal squid heavier, meaner and equipped with vicious rotating hook, they may not breathe fire or sink ships whole but in many ways they're even more fascinating. Because they're real. We've only seen them alive a handful of times. Most of what we know of them come from carcasses we find either on the beach, floating on the ocean or sometimes in sperm whales' stomachs. They live in a part of the ocean that resists exploration, where light doesn't even reach. Down there, the rules are different. Evolution favors the strange, the efficient, and the terrifying. And it's not just the giants. Its smaller cousins are almost just as strange, if not even more strange. Each of them shows us a different face of the deep sea, a world that feels more like outer space than part of our own planet. And yet, these creatures are out there right now, haunting the deep abyss. Thank you all for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you guys all soon.